share uh, some data that we're seeing and, and some comments. Uh, so thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Jeremy didn't give me many parameters, and so I, I get to ramble about whatever I want. So uh, please ask questions and um, uh, whatever thoughts you have. So uh, first, a little data from the State Department of Health. Uh, this is from their website. It's real time, except for I took this two hours ago. Uh, it's real time. And if you can see my cursor, uh, these are the number of positives by county. And so this is us here with uh, 2,248. And so the you know, through this whole pandemic, it's been Marion County, it's been Lake County, and you can see we're up to fourth now. We'll pass Allen County tomorrow because of our rating of increase is much higher than theirs. And so we are uh, on the rise. When you convert this to, let me see how many pictures, there we go. When you convert this to per 10,000 residents, uh, you can see that Marion County is at 112. We're ahead of 108 if you exclude the Tyson meatpacking plant issue down in Cass County. Uh, we're number two in the state in the number of positives per 10,000 population and significantly uh, increasing. So uh, this is the state, the daily statewide positive cases. And you can see the state kind of peaked back here in uh, later April. And so as the governor started rolling out uh, the phased reopening plan, it made perfect sense from a, a state uh, perspective because you can see the downward trend. When you lay Elkhart County next to that, uh, we're heading exactly the opposite direction. And so still very much on an increasing trend. Uh, when you see the state peaking around, you know, if you use this April 27th date peaking there, our April 27th data was practically nothing, very minimal. So uh, clearly our activity has been on a much delayed and increased cycle from what the state's been doing. Uh, kind of an aside, uh, but interesting, is the age demographics. And so statewide, you can see how it, it lays out in terms of positive cases by age. And Elkhart County is much younger in terms of positive cases, almost 15% in the under 20 age group compared to only 5.7 for the state. And so you don't have a lot of insight into why that is, but clearly our our graph has shifted up from what the rest of the state is seeing. So this is the daily positive uh, data as a control chart. And you can see back here in, in eight, much of April, we are, our high was 24, and then more recently 84 and 88, and then a few days ago uh, peaked at 101. You can kind of ignore these last three data points because testing results take two to four days to come in typically. And so these will get updated as more days go by. And so you can uh, clearly see the trend with this peak here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the peak. And so our experience is about 15% of positive cases get admitted to the hospital. And so when we see uh, 101, that means 15 of those will eventually get admitted in the hospital. And our correlation studies show that it's on average about six days after a positive test result is when somebody gets admitted. And so that's important from a hospital capacity standpoint. So when you see a title that says positive admissions, these are admissions to our hospital, not to the county. This is Goshen Health specific. And you can see for much of April, we were zero ones per day. Then it moved up to two, three a day. Now as we're getting into June, three, four, and then it's starting to take off five, six, nine. Of course I knew my phone would ring during the middle of um, And so that 101 day, you've got to, that was three days ago. So move forward another three or four days. This chart in terms of admissions, will keep going up. Um, anecdotal hospital capacity information. And this is from a phone call around to the hospitals yesterday. Uh, Lutheran and Parkview and Fort Wayne, very full, quite busy. 
Um, for, we still have capacity, but at this rate, we will run out of, if this continues, we will be tight on capacity here within the next week or two at the most. Uh, and sim similar conversations for uh, Elkhart and Memorial and uh, St. Joe and Goals. And so this trend is concerning because it's starting to press hospital capacity. Uh, one of the things that we've learned from the early experiences in Italy and New York, uh, the complexity of the patients are less. So early on, it was lots of concerns about running out of ICU beds, running out of ventilators, and those aren't, those aren't the issues right now. Uh, we've learned how to keep people off of ventilators, so we've uh, been on a little bit of a lag from those other areas where we treat people differently now. We don't put them on ventilators quite as quickly as what they would have in the past. And, um, the severity of the cases coming in, meaning the need for ICU beds is much less. So here's some uh, rambling comments and observations from me, and then I'll stop and be happy to uh, take any questions. Uh, I heard, uh, we heard Jackie Walorski say a version of this about a week and a half ago in a meeting that Mayor Jeremy and I were at. Uh, the, the region and Hoosiers, as she put it, is tired of the pandemic and the restrictions. And so people just don't want to comply with any restrictions. And so you start to see mass utilization going down, social distancing going down. Uh, my executive team, again, anecdotal as they go around to the large stores in our region, seeing 20 to 30% mask wearing, uh, hearing lots of stories of inconsistent application of safety precautions in employers. Some are doing great. Some are kind of loose. We've even heard stories of plant managers kind of forcing people to come in when they weren't feeling well. Uh, so that's a challenge. And then people just frankly want to get back together in family and social gatherings. And so all of this is contributing to the trends that you're seeing on those graphs. Uh, I could get uh, picked on about this, but there's been just truly lack of urgency in some of the messaging going out. Uh, from the health department and, and our county leaders. We could have done better with this. It's always great. It's easy to be um, a backseat reviewer on this, but in terms of restrictions or putting mask requirements on, uh, we're, we're, we're behind and we've got we've to do better with our messaging getting out. Uh, clearly seeing a disproportionate share of positive test results results in the Hispanic and Amish populations. And so how we communicate, share information, encourage improvements in uh, protecting each other. Uh, we need to uh, continue to work at that. And so uh, messaging campaigns are in the work. Uh, I really appreciate Mary Je Mayor Jeremy and the team in terms of we need to uh, uh, increase our messaging going out. And the messaging will take a different turn. You may have heard of news reports of, you know, it's my it's my right as a citizen to not wear a mask. Really what the issue is, is you wear a mask to protect others, to respect and protect others. Uh, you wear a mask to protect my 90 year old mother when you come in contact with her out in the community. And so you're doing that to protect other people. Now, if you really wanna be overly direct and obnoxious, I'm wearing a mask to not harm you and to not kill one of your family members. And so that's way overdone, overspoken, but that's the reality of why we're encouraging people to wear masks is to protect other people. And uh, meeting with uh, Dr. Uh, Lindsay Weaver yesterday, uh, she, her advice to us is uh, the messages, nobody, people are tired of the messages and they're not reading them anymore, they're worn out. You've got to have patient testimonials. And so uh, we are, uh, arranging to video some patients who have agreed, uh, patients who are positive, who are sick, who have recovered, and to really kind of uh, uh, share the message on why this is important and why we got why we've got to do these sorts of things. So that's the that's the quick overview, uh, Jeremy. I don't know if that was anywhere close to what you're hoping to see, uh, but I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Randy. And yeah, I think that's. Uh, you hit it right on the head that we're going to be working hard to get more messaging out there. Uh, we need our business community and our residential community to take this seriously. 
um, you need everybody to step up or we're going to be in a much worse uh, scenario quickly. Um, and before we go to questions from the council, uh, Chief Singh, did you have anything you'd like to add from the fire department's end or um, incident command? No, just from an incident command perspective, for those that don't know, we are Goshen Fire is participating with incident command each week. Uh, we are in coordination. I know Sherry Saracen from Goshen Health has been a great advocate for Goshen Health, and I totally enjoy studying and working with Sherry. She's been tremendous to work with. Um, we're endeavoring to help with the uh, messaging as well. As far as Goshen Fire Department, we are picking up uh, more positive patients. We obviously see the trend and uh, are delivering them to the to the ER. So uh, what we've done at GFD is uh, at least for the spike, everybody's leaving the station in full PPE. That means a gown, eye protection, uh, gloves, and, and the appropriate face mask, um, at least for the interim and, and most likely at least the next month. So we're taking all the precautions we can to make sure we don't uh, bring that back into the, uh, the firehouse. That's all I have, Mayor, unless somebody has a specific question for me. Any questions or comments from council members for either Andy or Keith? I've got one for Andy. Um, knowing that you don't have to live in Elkhart County to be tested in Elkhart County, how are those numbers distributed out? If you positive test in, in Elkhart County or Wilson, and you actually live in South Bend, uh, how is that counted? Is that counted uh, test? testing positive in Elkhart County, or does that go back to their county? Yeah, I, I think it, I think the data is by home address, and so it's wherever your home address is is where it gets attributed. Okay, thank you. And the, the state's told me before that that's why sometimes you see a little bump in the numbers, because they may count the numbers that come out of Elkhart County that day, and then when they adjust it and look at it and get addresses put back in, sometimes they have to take one away for the amount of time that they go back. Okay. First, I would just thank you for being here on today. I appreciate it. And I would say I find the, the hospital admissions information particularly um, useful, I think, as an educational tool for the community. And I know I've been hearing from Dr. Fauci and other national health professionals that watching the hospitalization rates is really key. And I think, you know, in terms of the messaging, I'm finding that that's not always getting out in the articles. So I, I'm just hoping that we're continuing to pay attention to the severity of it. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Randy, for, for sharing the, the information. And I, I think it's helpful for us to, to sort of get a sense of how we compare to other states, even though we can see it on the uh, on the screens that are in our homes or on our phone, right? Um, I'm interested, uh, I guess, to know uh, there is a there are two initiatives that have started here recently, which is the uh, African American Pandemic Initiative out of uh, the Minority Health Coalition and, and a number of African American leaders, and also uh, Latino Pandemic uh, Response Initiative that the uh, City of Goshen is also uh, participating in. And just didn't know in terms of uh, the, the type of engagement that Goshen Health System will have with those particular groups, and, and how do you see, could you see that coming together to offer some support? Uh, for the messaging, and we have a number of African American leaders and Latino leaders who are bringing very good information to the table and would, would want to share that with Ocean Health System and sort of receptivity to that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Am interested in being we are interested in being part of those. Uh, we can bring a lot of messaging and information to the table. Those groups can. Uh, advise and adapt and, and also really tell us how to what channels or what communication methods are the most effective and what what the messages ought to be and so I think that could be a great, great partnership. Thank you. Thanks for the talk amongst people that I know um, about studies coming from other countries for where schools have gone back to session and there hasn't been a huge increase in numbers and some suggesting that uh, asymptomatic kids are not necessarily passing it on to each other. Um, what schools, you know, planning on starting 
in and with our numbers spiking like this, um, is there any truth to that? Have you heard anything about that? Yeah, I, I have not seen any data on that specific question. And so I, I'm sorry, I'm not helpful there. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Any other questions from council? 